Aurak, saludos desde Sudáfrica. How I wish I could be with all of you today to once again celebrate the achievements emanating from the Aita Declaration of 21 October 2011. Our time flies. It seems like yesterday when I was introduced to the Basque-Spanish conflict. Almost 20 years have passed since the entry gates to the Basque peace process were opened to me and I found myself in the midst of the reality of your country with all its complexities. To go back in time, for 13 years I was the co-chairman of the Sentence Review Commission in the North of Ireland, starting in 1998, a body whose main function was to adjudicate and to oversee the early release of politically motivated prisoners related to the conflict there. My previous experience as chairperson of the current commission, appointed by the newly elected Mandela-led government, mandated to adjudicate upon the release of political prisoners in my own country at the end of apartheid had exposed me to the complexities of early release of prisoners. That work, together with my role in the north of Ireland, essentially exposed me to many, many challenges associated with what we call transitional justice. And these are unique measures, amongst others, to enable the early release of prisoners whose crimes are directly related to their country's political conflict. Very often, this goes hand in hand with amnesty or indemnity for crimes committed. Not the case in the Basque country. Early release of prisoners, leaving aside for one moment, leaving aside completely, amnesty is a highly emotive and contentious topic. There are conflicting interests between many stakeholders, the victims and their families, the prisoners and their families, political parties, social groups and society at large. In the last 20 years, 13 of which I was directly involved in your peace process, I have witnessed an awe-inspiring evolution and change. It has been a great privilege for me to be able to accompany you on this path. With so many issues that appear to be unresolved, with your determination and commitment, with the contribution of political parties, the international community, trade unions and civil society, you have become an example of determination, courage, creative thinking and social resilience to other countries in finding new ways and new opportunities for peace and coexistence. We brought inspiration from South Africa and North of Ireland and now it is the Basque country that inspires people who work for peace and conflict resolution in other parts of the world. For example, in Colombia today. The advances here in the Basque country were strategic and incremental. Eventually, ETA took the initiative, declaring an unconditional, unilateral and internationally verifiable ceasefire, followed by its announcement ending the armed struggle, and although with difficulties, this culminated in a disarmament process led by civil society, which was a prelude to its dissolution. The parliaments of your country have developed systems and methods to protect and safeguard the victims of violence or people who have suffered serious violations of human rights, starting with the victims of ETA and incorporating measures aimed at victims of state violence or torture. While referring to parliaments, let it not be forgotten that after many years of banning illegalization and threats, now all political traditions present in the Basque country have the fundamental right to participate in its political life. The transformation of the Basque country has been radical. The Basque country that I knew 20 years ago is not the same as it is now. From a destructive internecine conflict you have become a modern, vibrant society that looks to the future with hope and that has bequeathed to its sons and daughters an incalculable gift, peace and, and an example to your descendants of how to resolve differences through dialogue, cooperation, without violence or exclusion. 
this change, this transformation, this peace building process which is ongoing and it is not an event, it is ongoing, also requires a painstaking management of an inevitable legacy of violent conflict which is extremely painful and difficult and that is all the suffering. As a society you must not forget the victims of the violence, whether from ETA or from violations of human rights perpetrated by the state. The victims must feel a deep level of society's empathy and acknowledgement of their suffering and let it not be forgotten. They are reminders of what Basque society once was and what it should never ever be again. The Basque government may want to consider declaring a special public holiday to be celebrated each year. On the one hand, to reflect on the legacies of the past, to remember the victims who died and who suffered. On the other hand, to celebrate reconciliation measures already taken and to commit to fresh reconciliation measures to be undertaken for the following year. This will only succeed if it is done in a spirit of coexistence. I am also aware of the suffering of family members and loved ones of people in prison. The dispersion and distancing policy was a cruel tool. It has filled me with relief and joy to witness the significant steps that have been taken to resolve these issues and others relating to ongoing incarceration of long-term prisoners. I am mindful that these reforms are a direct consequence of civil society's mobilisation and the cooperation between political parties and governments. A simultaneous challenge is the reintegration of prisoners into society. I have no doubt that this too will be a collaborative project involving civil society, political parties and the Basque government. The UN points out that the reintegration of prisoners is crucial in a peace-building context because it contributes to social stability, reconciliation and the prevention of future conflicts. Thanks to relationships that I continue to have with people involved in the peace-building process in the Basque Country, I am aware of the progress that has been made. But I am also aware of the obstacles and challenges regarding reintegration. The slow pace of the process is a problem and it needs to be resolved because there is a direct correlation between reintegration and coexistence in the Basque Country. The exceptional security measures implemented during the previous decades remain active to a large extent, notwithstanding a post-conflict radically transformed past country. Penitentiary policy and the reintegration process of prisoners must adapt to this new reality of peace, stability and democracy. These should now be tools for reconstruction, coexistence and reconciliation. I am also aware of the steps that prisoners themselves are taking on this path of reconciliation and their social reintegration. I commend them for that and wish to encourage them to continue with these steps and to be active agents in healing the wounds of victims of violence and of society as a whole. All of society must participate in this challenge. Much has already been achieved. The change has been radical and for the better. Basque society has the best opportunity now to build a future of peace and coexistence. What has been achieved has been thanks to you, to your determination to find new paths and to overcome obstacles that your troubled history left in its wake. You must maintain this momentum so that the consequence of years of violence and conflict do not remain a painful, unpierced boil with the potential to spread its infection throughout the entire body of the Basque country. Continue to address the issues of victims and prisoner reintegration by collaborating and working on solutions with vigour. Together political parties, governments, civil society and social groups can achieve this. Just as you overcame violent conflict in the past, achieve political stability and all-inclusive democracy. I am very proud to have been able to accompany you on this 
transition to peace and I'm fully convinced that you will be able to consolidate coexistence. Muchas gracias. Es que Agur. Adiós.